After completing the extremely daunting and exhausting task of working on your boomer shooter game mechanics, you might have to start working on your maps. And what better way is there to map for such a game other than mapping for a similar old game? We're going to be using the Ultimate Doom Builder because of its ability to export maps as models. We will need a pirated copy of Doom or Doom 2 so we can get its files. But don't worry, we're just going to use it to get temporary assets that we'll be replacing later in engine. After configuring Ultimate Doom Builder, we'll start drawing our map. This tutorial ain't about Doom mapping, so I'll leave a link below for those of you who want to learn how to map in the Ultimate Doom Builder. After drawing our map, we'll go to File, Export, OBJ, then change the scale to 0.04. Of course, I'm basing this off the fact that the player would be about 1 meter tall in my game, but you can configure that to whichever size you wish. Of course, you might think the next step would be importing and setting it up and get out, but there is a small issue. I don't know what causes it, but the normals of the map are just weird in the walls. Because when you try to light them, it seems like they're not affected by any light, but just by the ambient shadow color. To fix this, we're going to have to go into Blender, and go to Geometry, and Clear Custom Split Normals Data. I don't know what this does, but it fixes it. So we're going to export this again as an OBJ. Now in Godot, let's import the mesh and add a child to our 3D scene. That would be a mesh instance. Then in the mesh section, drag and drop your map mesh. Now click the mesh button over there and create a tri-mesh static body. This will give the map a collision shape that our player controller can collide with. Now let's replace the materials. Open this tab and you'll get the, the array of materials used in your map. Play with them to see which is which. I'd suggest naming them after knowing which is which though. After doing that, replace each material with its equivalent from your project. If you haven't got any though, I'd suggest putting some placeholders. Still, your artist decides the $0 per hour is a very fair and reasonable price for indie dev making a game that'll probably make no money whatsoever. Now you can just drag your player in and test how the map plays. It works! Congrats! Now you've got a quick and dirty way to make maps for your games.